It doesn't matter where I'm employed as a park ranger. What does matter is my secret job, the thing that I do when I'm off the grid so to speak. A werewolf started appearing about six months ago, and I'm still not sure why. At first, we got calls from visitors saying they encountered grizzly bears, or something approximating one, deep in the forest. For the first few months, we got maybe a dozen calls. After that, things really started to ramp up, daily or rather, nightly sightings. Despite that, no one could really get a good look at the thing everyone assumed to be bear. Then my boss showed up, a man I rarely saw. He tossed a trank dart gun at me and told me to head into the woods. Whatever you do, don't kill the thing. Based off the information we've been able to gather, this is no damn bear. Something possibly, supernatural. Does this have anything to do with Elijah's disappearance last month? Something killed Elijah, and we never found the body. James only gave a slight nod, something that could be denied later if asked. The less you know the better, Liam. Just take your truck and head into the woods. I'll mark the most recent sighting on your map, James said, crossing his arms and giving me a look that told me not to ask any more questions, but I couldn't help myself. Guess some weird government agency is involved in this if you're telling me not to kill it. You'd think the safety of the visitors would come first, I said, but James cut me off. Now, officially, that's none of our business, Liam. Just talking orders. You'd be wise to do the same. So I closed my mouth and got to work, loading my vehicle with some last minute things I thought I might need, food slash water slash binoculars. Then I got in the truck and drove down the winding road. I decided to not get on the walkie because I didn't want to alert James. My plan was this, pick up Bill, my partner in crime more or less, at his usual patrolling location, then head off to where the location James marked on the map and see if we couldn't tag team this thing. I caught Bill just sitting in his patrol truck reading an Agatha Christie novel and smoking a cigarette. I remember him telling me how relaxing he found it. Being out here, not a care in the world, tending to his biological needs, the cigarette, and the needs of his higher brain, the Agatha Christie novel. Hey, Bill, we got a situation James wants us to look into. Bill looked up from his novel, mildly irritated. What kind of situation? Gotta trank something. You know, that thing that everyone thinks is a bear but probably isn't. Why trank instead of kill? Yeah, I was wondering that, too. Anyway, hop in, good buddy. We got a long night ahead of us, and that's putting it really fucking mildly. Bill got in and we drove off in the direction of the last sighting. I filled Bill in on what little I knew. Guess the thing that really concerns me is why now? Why a month after Elijah's death? Bill asked, thumbing through the book in his hands but not really reading it. That caught my attention, too. I don't know the reason. I just know that something fishy is going on. Then that's when we saw it. A large, hairy beast running on all fours, then randomly standing upright and roaring. Our headlights seemed to confuse the thing. Bill took out his pistol, rolled down the window and fired. Bill, what the fuck are you doing? No lethal force is allowed on this thing. We gotta use the trank gun. The thing, which upon closer inspection looked exactly like a werewolf, just roared and charged at the truck, grabbing its bottom and shaking it violently until Bill and I were completely disoriented. It then leapt into the trees. What the fuck is wrong with you? I said to Bill again once my head stopped spinning. I said no lethal weapons. Sorry, Liam. Just got rattled is all. Wasn't going to get turned to human paste because a pair of government issue sunglasses told us not to us actual bullets. Bill replied, face flushed. Well, after that I began to drive again, keeping our eyes peeled for the werewolf. We heard howls coming from the infinite line of trees to our left. No matter how much we combed the woods we didn't find anything. This went on for several nights, experiencing horrific sightings of the massive man-wolf. I went by myself after the first night because I didn't trust Bill not to fire bullets at the thing. James was ripping me a new ass because I couldn't track the damn thing down, at least, not keep it in my sights long enough to trank it. On the fourth night, 
I sat in my truck on the side of a wide road, scanning the eerily still line of palm trees. My ears pricked as I heard the soft crunch of twigs as tired crushed them. I peeked in the rearview mirror and saw a sleek black car parking behind me. A short woman with red hair came out of the car, using precise movements so that not one ounce of energy was wasted. Are you Liam? The woman asked, popping into my window like she was a cop about to give me a ticket. I heard the trees rustle behind her and began to perspire a little on my forehead. I'd tell you that you shouldn't be out this way, ma'am, since we've seen had a few bear sightings out this way, but, I started. I don't mean to be blunt, but I outrank park rangers. Again, not trying to be a jerk, just stating a fact. The woman seemed fairly young, and her smile sent a shiver down my spine because it was so emotionless. She explained to me what was going on. She worked for a government agency, one I hadn't heard before, and they had been working on a serum to reverse the transformation of the werewolf. They were hoping I could sedate the thing before it did any real damage or chose to move on to an even broader wilderness. There has been a reason why this werewolf has been so good at evading you, and I'm not sure it has anything to do with it having preternatural abilities," the woman said. She finally introduced herself as Sarah Perkins. Here, take this trank gun. It comes with a special tranquilizer that will not only sedate the werewolf, but also hopefully reverse his transformation. It hasn't been tested on his kind, since we believe he is the only one of his kind that exists," Sarah said and handed me a much larger gun than I had, which had a small tube filled with yellow liquid fitted onto the top. She had one for herself too. We hurried into the woods, following the howls until I felt like we were dangerously close. Sarah scanned the environment, looking more vigilant than nervous. Okay, maybe a little nervous, but she hit it remarkably well. As for me, I was terrified. Not afraid to admit that since I didn't have special government training to deal with a friggin' werewolf. The trees all around us began to rustle, and before I could really get my bearings, the massive hairy beast shot from the top of one of the trees and landed on the ground. My hands shook. I tried to steady my gun, except my nerves wouldn't let me. Steady, I said, steady. But I just couldn't calm my shaking hands. The beast slowly moved closer on all fours, fierce yellow eyes fixed on me. A pound of drool must have escaped from its jaws, hanging from them in thick, disgusting streams that made me want to vomit. It swiped the air with massive claws, growling. Just as I thought I was a goner, I heard the sound of a whisper whizzing by at about a hundred miles an hour, landing in the beast's hairy, bulging neck. Without thinking, I fired my own gun. The dart landed in the thing's abdomen. It growled weakly and collapsed onto the ground. Sarah didn't waste any time. She ran toward the thing and placed a small chip deep into the fur of its right arm. Tracking device, she said as its breathing slowed. The trank slash transformation dart did what she claimed the beast began to shrink. The fur started to go back into the skin. It all happened so quickly that at first I didn't believe what I was seeing. I went over to the man, who shivered and rubbed his arms. The transformation had taken a toll on him. It took me a minute, but I recognized the man. Elijah, I said under my breath. You're alive. How is this even possible? Well, congratulations, Sarah, a man's voice said from behind. You got the subject X first. You won the bet. I turned around. Bill. Bill. What is going on? I asked, tone clearly frazzled. Sarah jumped in. We work at the same agency. We had a little bet going. Whoever got to the werewolf first could do with it as it pleased. Kill it, or trank it and put a tracking device on it. Of course, my way aligned with the agencies. Bill here is a renegade, wants to eliminate everything in sight. Bill gave a soft chuckle. Well. Guess I got what I want either way, Bill said, grinning and patting me on the back as he walked past me. He knelt in front of Elijah, and seemed to pluck one of the remaining werewolf hairs from one of its forearms and put it in a small glass vial. Then Sarah and Bill seemed to be talking in code, and I couldn't at all parse what they were saying. Bill came up to me afterward. Okay, Liam. We better get out of here before that trank dart wears off. 
looks like the serum's effects were only temporary. It'll completely change back into werewolf form in less than 15 minutes. Part of the transformation has already begun. The sedative will wear off in about 10 after that. But don't worry, we can track the thing with the device Sarah put on it. So we all left. Sarah in her sleek government vehicle, and Bill and I in our park ranger truck. You can't tell James that I work for a government agency that hunts a werewolf, he said. Now, I wanted to kill the thing, wipe it off the map, but Sarah had other plans. I have to respect the bet. I lost. She won. Which means that Elijah will be roaming the woods, and we have to track him every night, study him. After a while, once the agency has all the information it needs, it will either give a kill order, and I can deliver a bullet to the thing's brain, or it will come up with a serum that will permanently erase Elijah's werewolf tendencies. So, with Bill's help, I track Elijah every night, using regular trank darts to sedate him. We take hair and skin samples, put everything into stainless steel containers that get shipped back to a secret government lab. They are working on a serum just like Bill said, one which will be permanent. I've learned to accept Bill's new identity. Aspiring werewolf killer. I'll deal with it when the time comes. I think I have additional problems to the fate of Elijah because I've gone to the workman's cabin, seeing Bill with those strange yellow eyes more than once. I'm not sure if he is a full-fledged werewolf, because he's been with me every night, and I just see him in his human form, except sometimes as we are driving along, I'll see his eyes turn yellow under the deep shadows cast by the moon. Something is clearly different. Did the sample he took from Elijah that night have something to do with it? I feel trapped in this situation. Bill seems something else besides human, and I can't abandon my post without making him suspicious. I also don't want to abandon my post because I feel like I have a duty to the visitors here to keep this werewolf at bay. And I do agree with Sarah, given the circumstances, I don't feel comfortable ending the life of a fellow park ranger. Bill's a relative newcomer, and I worked with Elijah for years before he disappeared. I don't want to give up on a fellow ranger, 